Hello everybody and welcome to my Tuesday night live painting demo. Tonight I'm doing a painting of uh, Karis Rogers. She is a, a young anti-bullying activist and um, and also a, a fashion designer. She has her own fashion line called Flexing in My Complexion and uh, she um, started the line actually as a anti-bullying um, fashion items to support her um, hashtag. She started it with her sister as a way of creating advocacy fashion and it's been doing very well over the last three years, two years rather. She's now 12 years old and I found her photo on Pinterest and I, be, I was actually attracted to um, her dark skin color, the very um, thing that she was bullied for, I found quite attractive and um, was interested in the way the highlights reflected off her skin and the um, the fill lighting, the warm fill lighting, and the shadow side. This was one of four photos that I submitted to my followers to, um, to choose from, and this one um, won overwhelmingly. And the fact is, actually, Karis might be tuning in tonight to watch also. Um, I let her know that I was doing a painting of her, and she seemed um, seemed excited about it. So hopefully she will tune in. And I'm just I'm starting in with the general lay-in, just trying to get a, a sense of where things fall. I'll do a little bit of measuring. I use... Uh, a one-to-one -one ratio. My um, my panel is the same size as the reference on the screen that I'm painting from, reference on my computer monitor, and um, that way I can measure directly on the computer monitor and uh, figure out uh, the placement on the panel. So I just need to get a measurement on her neck to the side so that's right about here and then her jawline is very close to that try to get a measurement on her chin so that's coming down to about there let's do the same thing for the ear so it doesn't help me if I don't figure out where the ear starts because then I won't get the the right angle to the to her jawline. So her jawline drops down here and is almost straight to the point of her chin. Let's make sure I'm getting the right center line to her chin. It's right about there. And then her neck actually drops in probably closer to that. And that's going to be a softer line because I want it to sit further back in space, but at this point I don't have to really worry about it. Let's do top of her head from the top edge of the panel. That actually has to come down lower, something like that. Let's get a little more paint on the brush just so I can draw more easily. You can always clean it up later. I'm going to measure right from her eyeball to the edge of the panel. So that's right around there. Let's um, go ahead and check the height too. So I'm going to do from the top of the panel to the lower eyelid edge of the lower eyelid. So that is actually right down about here. A lot lower than I thought it would be. Okay, I need I'm gonna need to double check some of these measurements, make sure they're right. If, if her eye opening is there, then her base of her nose is going to be pretty close to that. Okay, that's right. It's a good thing I'm measuring here because I would have put her eyes much higher. If you're tuning in tonight and uh, I'd like to know where you're watching from and 
if you have any questions for me too that's that's fine I'm happy to answer questions as I'm painting I know some of you have um, tuned in before and know the drill others I just go ahead and I'll answer questions as I paint and do the best job I can of describing what I'm doing as I work this um, after this goes live um, or this is live demo is completed then it will be posted to my YouTube channel um, directly afterwards so it'll be able, you'll be able to watch the whole thing in its entirety afterwards if um, you happen to need to go to bed or um, it's very late where you are or very early then you can watch it at, at your own leisure really want to make sure that um, getting these measurements correct. So let's say her cheek right where her mouth is is right about there. Let's get her this brush is the um, gesso on my panel is very dry so it's not um, very absorbent so it's really pulling in the paint so need to make a few passes with each stroke unless I get a little more paint on the brush. So I think I just have to come a touch higher with the nose there and pull the chin in a little bit more. Okay. Something seems a little bit off in the proportion, but I'll, I'll get it eventually. Just keep on measuring until I can figure out what's off. That's good. Okay, so I see someone, Michael's in Tulsa, Rishi's in Atlanta, Ozimas is in Nigeria. Uh, welcome back, Ozimas. Um, Nathan is in Utah, in Bountiful. I wish I lived in Bountiful. And uh, Gary is in Albuquerque, and Steve is in Chicago. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Um, Let's just get a little bit of black here along better to find the her profile I think is going to help me and a little bit of the shape of her hair she's got these really nice springy curls I'm going to have to figure out how to paint those and to get them to read correctly this nice big flower in her hair. It's just going to outline the general shape just for placement and the rest of her hair here and the, the side of her face is just falling off into shadow. And this side looks like it's going to have to be higher. If I look at the corner of her eye here, the bridge of her nose is probably a little more this way. And then I have the other corner of her eye. Let's get a measurement there. That's about right. Let's get a measurement from the top. If I do a very good job of measuring where the eyes fall, then the rest seems to sort of fall into place. You can kind of pivot everything around that. Let's do a little bit of getting the white of her eye in on this side so that it's not so oddly defined. And her eye is kind of a bluish black. And kind of better to find the shape of the eye here. dark orange for maybe there's a little eye shadow there just above the eye I can go a little bit lighter and go a little bit 
bit lighter here just to get some of that the turn that's not looking quite right yet but it'll get there as I get the val start to get the values correct the whites of her eyes are almost blown out in this shot there you can see a little bit of bluish white along the edges Okay, let me see. Uh, Dave is in Cleveland, Steve is in Chicago, and uh, Gary, I think I mentioned already, Albuquerque. Gary, uh, you do, do you thin the paint to make your drawing? Yes, I'm using um, both Gamsol and um, Safflower oil, depending. Um, the, they work about the same, but the, if you mix Gamsol to thin the paint, it dries much quicker. If you use the safflower oil, um, it takes a, a much longer to dry. It's it is similar to the um, binder that's in the paint. So if you just imagine adding more oil to the oil, it will take longer to dry. I'm just going to get a dash of the blue in here that we start to see in her skin tones, and a little bit of the lighter orangey yellow color and this turns to red along the edge of her cheek. And then I got a cooler, cooler skin tones. I have to go a little bit lighter. If I just add a little bit of white, that will cool the color significantly. So that will help me with some of those shifts by adding um, white to get lighter. Like I said, this um, the gesso for some reason is uh, very um, absorbent tonight. Um, usually, I think I may have just gone a little bit thicker pass of gesso than I usually do, so it's um, just a little bit tighter. Plus, I think my um, colors on my palette have um, dried a little bit, so that's. All in all, it's just making it a little bit tougher. I'm going to just grab a bigger brush so I can speed things along a little bit. That, that'll that help me. I got this big area of a bluish white in here. In her forehead. It's not really, really blue, but I'm just exaggerating it a little bit to begin with. Just to kind of get me on the right track have to be mindful of these butterflies. I do want to get them in to some degree, but um, I may start initially keeping them fairly abstract until I um, get a feel for them. Okay, and I need to go a little bit lighter in her cheek here. I got too dark. There's, we got some really nice magentas and purples in her nose, in the top of her nose, a little bit lighter than that. And then we, of course, we have that really nice highlight on the tip of her nose. That's going to be the, really the focal point of the painting, if I can manage to hold on to it. Let me see. Uh, see if I missed any questions. So. Um, Rishi says, do you plan on making a video one day on how you mix color? You've mentioned this in the past. Love what uh, you achieve with your colors. Thanks again for all your insights. Well, now that I have a camera set up for my palette, um, it would make that a little bit easier just to do a color mixing video. Um, but it's so much easier for me to talk about color mixing as I'm color mixing for an actual thing because um, I can achieve certain colors but I'm always mixing relative from one one area of a face to another so based on my piles of color that I develop on my palette then I know how to change it slowly um, just mixing to mix colors on um, may be a little bit harder for me to explain what I'm doing. 
Let's get the shadow side of her nose in so I can get a little bit better idea of where I am. That's how I put in a very strong purple there. I'm going to dull that down over time, but just to kind of get me off in the right direction. Just really use simplified shapes, and then I can go in and modulate those a little bit to get a better sense of detail. And I don't have the right axis for her nose yet. I, it's not quite following the tilt of her head quite right, so need to bring that um, closer nostril up higher. And then a little bit of orange underneath her nose, so I'm getting the underside. And I got this, there's this little ridge on the bottom side, it has a lot of purple in it right here. Let's see if I can get that with my bigger brush. So, and then I have that little bit of a lighter color coming right above her nostril. And if I keep on working around the tip of her nose, eventually it will start to have a bit of dimension. Got a nice little pink hitting right here. And let's see, let me grab a smaller brush so I can put in that highlight. Now, I may have to end up repainting this if I don't have it quite in the right spot and I really probably should have measured better. Let's just get a quick measurement. It's not bad. Let's get that, let's hit that white again. I uh, got a little, a little messy. Um, oh yeah, my, my paints have dried too much, so they're a little bit ropey tonight, which means they're not coming off my brushes easily as I'd like. That's the the downside of leaving um, the colors on my palette as opposed to just scraping them all off and starting again. But, you know, these paints can be kind of expensive, so I try to leave them on as long as I can. Okay, just building up again the dimensions and the nose. Let's get that Again, a bluish white that um, comes down the middle of the bridge. And let's pull the tip of the nose in a little bit. It'll get there eventually. So I just move these shapes around and fix um, fix the shape design a little bit so that they all relate to each other. Then all of this will start to read. And I'm going to have to hit that highlight again, just not yet. Okay, Gary asks, um, you're using one brush so far. Do you just wipe the brush on a paper towel when switching colors. Um, yeah, but I'm actually, I've been using so far two different brushes. Um, I have a bigger brush that I had been using, but since I wanted to get a little more control in some of the detailed areas, I switched back to the smaller brush. But I'm about to go um, bigger again. So I can, don't have to sc um, scumble quite so much. I can cover larger areas, so. That's I'm gonna. I've switched back right now to a, a larger bright brush. Okay, that needs to go darker, redder, grayer. But that's sort of the right direction. Let's go a little more purple, mauve in the cheek here. It's got a bit more white in it here. And then right below that is a shadow area. Shadow there has quite a bit of purple in it. And the, her lips have like 14 different colors in it. So I'm just going to kind of indicate and then later I can um, define those better. Let's see if I can get her lower lip color. It's a very soft pink. 
and her teeth are just barely showing there and I do want to get those in so I'm going to have to get the dark um, division in her lips so that we can understand that her mouth is slightly open and again I'll have to come back and refine this Got some of her cheek colors a little bit better so it's reading properly. Okay, that's got to be cooler, a cooler red. Kind of a pink with blue here in her cheek. That goes a little bit darker as it gets towards that edge. Okay, hopefully some of this is starting to make sense visually. I'm just throwing down a bunch of colors very quickly. Yeah, these paints are definitely drying up on my palette, so at some point I may just take a break so I can kind of um, get a better assessment of what's on my palette and decide to scrape some of it off. Um, it should only take about a minute when I decide to do it. Let's get that, um, repaint that nostril, I'm getting a little bit of red with black. That's the alizarin permanent and the, I think I actually have a ivory black on my palette right now. For the most part, I've used chromatic black, but I think for this painting, um, the ivory black is going to work well. I need something that's going to dull my colors a little bit as I work. And the ivory black um, does that um, fairly well. Okay, let's get that hit of light that's at the top of her lips. And we get a little bit of reflected light on the underside here. If I can get that in the right place. It's a little more orange in it. It's very subtle, which means I have to come in with black right underneath it. Black are a very dark value for that to read. Okay, I've been hanging on to that smaller brush again, so I'm just dropping it so I can get back to where it was. Move along a little more quickly. Going pure black with that eyebrow, but I may want to get a little more purple in there too. It's not black black, it's more of has a bit of um, gray in it. And my darkest dark is going to be here, in the shadow of the hair, and her ear here. That's got a bit of purple in it also. Let's go. Let's just go purple. Just push a lot of purple in there. It's When it's that, um, the color's that dark, it doesn't um, read as overwhelming. It's when you get a little bit of white in it that it would start to become a little overpowering. And I do see a little bit of blue in her cheek. Again, careful not to put too much. That's too strong, but you can knock that down a bit with a bit of this black and gray. shadow on her upper lip here. It's got red in it. And the hollow of her 
cheek. Now, I really did go too blue there in that shadow, and it it's much grayer, more purple. So let's see if I can adjust that a little. And then push this area much more towards red. Red, I said, red. Okay, there we go. It's a trouble. If I got a little bit of the thalo blue in there, it takes a lot of paint to, to shift that color. It's so strong. Okay, I feel like the mouth has to be a touch higher, so I'm going to work it up a little bit. Move that lip up. Don't know if I can hit that color there in her low in her upper lip. It's sort of very um, reddish brown. very dark. Okay, that's that's looks like it. Okay, and we got this um, cast shadow from her nose coming across her cheek. And then down underneath their nose. Let's soften the edge of that form shadow a little. Okay, so I need to come up with a little bit of background color because um, I need to refine the edge of her cheek a little bit. So I have it out just too far. Is that the color I want? Let me go a little bit lighter. Um, okay, so um, Gary also asked, what size is the photo in Canvas? They're both um, 8 by 12 inches. So they are... Um, it's a standard size panel. Um, I use Speedball Mona Lisa panels. And that size is about, that's about a dollar sixty a panel, I think. It's about the last um, pricing I remember. Okay, the color seems to be pretty spot on so far. May do some adjustments. Let's get a little bit tighter with the jawline there. I think the mouth is just going to have to move in a little bit. That's fine. Oh, too dark. Let's get a lot of red in there for this part of the cheek and lighter. And then gets darker, the shadow underneath her lip. And then the division in between her lips go darker. Let's smooth out some of these transitions so they start to pull together. this edge to be softer, the form shadow on the cheek. And I want that bright orange to come in along her jawline. Again, I had a lot of blue there, so we really have to come up with a fair amount of wet paint. There we go. Let's pull the angle of this um, eye up higher. And 
and she has some metallic eyeshadow on. That's going to be an interesting thing to try to get to read correctly. Okay, new paper towel. Oh, so yes, I do wipe my brush each time I, I give it a rinse and then I give it a wipe each time I change colors if I really don't want the previous color to influence the color at all. Otherwise I keep on just mixing with the same brush without cleaning it. Okay, remember I said I wanted this um, the edge of the neck to be softer so eventually I'm going to come in and get that. Got a little bit of light blue here on the top of the chin. And this kind of keep a triangular shape to everything. Make sure her chin is um, has sort of overall point pointy feeling to it. Got this beautiful reflected light in the underside. Go a little bit lighter with that. Lighter. Again, bring that nostril up just a little bit higher and punch back a little bit the edge of that nostril so I need a little bit of a darker accent that can be pretty purple get that lighter red on the underside of the nose again clean it up a bit Get that highlight on the tip of the nose again. It's going to take me a few tries to get that one. I'm just trying the corner of my bigger brush to see if I can hit it hard enough. Same thing on the bridge of the nose, just getting a glob of paint right on the corner of my brush. And then this um, narrows down as it comes um, lower down the nose. There's lots of little accents in there. I'm going to need a smaller brush to get some of those. But just um, indicate that this eye is a little bit wider. And then her iris needs to move over a little bit here. Just um, subtly moving some things around and over until they look like they're in the right place. So I, even though I have some of the color down a little bit, I can trim edges and, and push the paint around a little bit until it feels like it's in the right spot. Let's see if I can get the curve of her forehead to start to read. Just going to go ahead and paint around that butterfly. 
Okay, I do feel like she needs a little more shape in her hair. So I'm going to get some of that hair color in. Again, we need lots of purple. There, and the highlights kind of go blue. She has these strands of hair that are matted against her, the top of her head. So I want to make sure I get the right feeling for that and with a bit of blue in there. Notice I'm painting very quickly. If I really need to get some detail, I need to slow it down much more. But not at this point in the painting. It really, um, I can still paint pretty fast. shadow color of her cheek over a little bit further. More red, more black. Okay, now that's starting to read. that hit of blue that's right in the corner of her mouth. the reflection on her lower lip. That's almost straight white. Eventually I'm going to have to come in with pure white just to get it to where it needs to go. Get that little bit of yellow that's coming in right there and correct the shape in the upper lip. Highlight that little rectangle or little triangle rather. And then some nice dark accents at the top of her lip. And the color of her lip compared to the upper lip, it's very close. It can almost be a lost edge in some of this. Like I said, there was a little bit of reflection here in her lower lip, in the upper lip rather, that helps it read. And then I got her teeth. I'm going to use a little bit of blue or purple and the white to get that to start to read. And let's trim her nostril a little bit. That looks better. Just get a little more white color lighter in the cheek there. Okay, I can 
see, I need to go darker here. A lot of these values are very close, so it takes a bit of back and forth before get them to their right value and that they're reading properly um, to the values that are next to them. I think it just went a little too dark there, so can bring it back a little bit. We're unsure right here. Got a little bit of paint skin there. I want to clean that up. Not a big fan of big um, gloppy pieces of dried paint in the painting. So, I mean, that's going to happen if you don't change your paints enough, but I'd rather try to remove them if I can. edge of that shadow is really pretty soft. And then see if I can get the corner of her mouth there. And a little bit of a shadow that's underneath her lip. Again, I have that cast shadow that's jutting out on her cheek a little bit. get a little bit of detail in her eye. It gives me something kind of that looking realistic, so it helps me understand where I am. Okay. Then we got a little bit of the edge of the eyelid where it just gets a little bit darker where it meets up to the eye there and that's a little purple. And I got to cut in a little bit tighter here. Oops. Okay, let's get that um, reflection that's right here. And there's a little stripe of blue. Can go a bit lighter. There we go. And then the lightest part of that eye, the white of her eye, is right up against the iris. And then you have to indicate where her upper eyelid um, creases so we can better understand how that is coming towards us in space. There's just a little bit of white in there where it's catching the light. And the same with the lower eyelid. Her makeup is um, very reflective there in the corner of her eye. And 
and there's just a little bit of blue in the white of the eye just underneath the, the eyelid and it gives us a sense that there's a little bit of shadow there. Let me get a little, clean this up a little bit. And then um, got everything except for that the darkest dark on the underside of that lid. I not really indicating her eyelashes yet but I can throw a little bit in here where it just catches a little bit of blue so you can see where it is. Then I'm correcting the shape of this highlight there and I may come in with a little bit thicker paint if I can just let the white sit right on top let's pull this light in a little bit tighter and I have a little bit of shadow underneath her eyelid it's kind of a warmish dark color correct the shape of her nose a little bit. This little shadow area does come down a bit lower. And it comes across. I have that a bit too dark, but that's okay for now. Well, let's correct it while we're here. Okay, a little bit of pure white right on the bridge of the nose. There's this light orange that kind of defines where the edge of the nose is. It has a little bit of darker purple here that butts against it. I think I kind of messed that up, but let's see if I can straighten it out. Oh, wrong value, wrong color. <laughs> On the top of her nose here, it's sort of like a lightish purpley color. And it comes out further. And then we have this darker purple here. Just runs right about there. Yeah, that's not too far off. Okay, you gotta get the right color. Say paint. Okay. I guess I have this wild dream that the color goes down right the first time that I paint it and not the fifth or sixth time. That's sort of a fantasy of mine. <laughs>
sort of interesting blue purple on the corner of her lip here this is catching the light a little bit It's looking pretty good so far. Again, I managed to grab the smaller brush. I don't know when that happened, but probably because I've been painting around the eyes so much. Let's get that bigger brush going then. My bigger bright. Just trying to quickly get some of these um, larger areas of color in, and I can refine them later. Just going to put in some orange for now just to indicate where this butterfly is. I can come in with more detail later. Without spending a lot of time, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get these butterflies to read um, properly. So this is sort of a, you know, I'll take a stab at it. Come back in and put the like little paper doily holes in and see if that reads at all. But if not, I'll just come up with some better idea. I may t take one or two of them out. Okay, let's get some of my background color going too on the other side. And the background is pretty flat in this painting except for um, above her head looks like a deeper orange. But I may just modulate the color a little bit just to create um, greater interest. She has 
this bright orange edge of her dress coming in and then almost the same color as the background. clean paper towel. Um, let me see. The hero John Brady says, hey, Jay. And uh, Veth says, love your painting. Thank you. Welcome, you guys. Okay, so other butterfly. Let's get the, some of the basic colors of that butterfly in, if I can manage to get some clean color on top of the black that I already put down. This will be a tough one. John Brady says, it's been a long time since I've been here. Well, welcome back. Uh, Vess, uh, okay, I already read that one. Um, and that's all the comments so far. Okay. Want to get that darker orange that's behind. Okay, time to put out some new orange on my palette. Great. Have some right here. Just put a lot of it, because I know I'm going to need a fair amount for those butterflies. I'm also low on my naphthal red, if I can find that quickly. There it is. Kind of messy. I'm right near the end of the tube, and it's been leaking. And a little bit of cronacridone red. If you bear with me, I can find it. I think this one's been leaking too. Nope, that's not it.
Anacrodone Red, I know you're in here. Is that it? No. That's an Apthal Red. Sorry about that. So, I, Kara said she might um, tune in tonight, the, the model. Um, it is, um, she lives in LA, I believe, so it would be about 7 o'clock her time, so not too late. Cranacridone red, unless I dump them out all on the floor, and it's easier to find. Well, this color is really hidden. Purple. Is this it? Oh. No, that looks like the Lizarin permanent. Yep. Just pull that out so I don't get it confused. <laughs> sorry, this is a little bit of an intermission. <laughs> I have to say I'm really sorry about that. Um, I think I have a new tube somewhere, so I may pull that out if I really can't find it. I may have just run out and thrown it out and not um, remembered. So I have my painting supply closet, Cranacridone Red. Brand new tube, folks. There it is. Gambling. You know. Get this open quickly. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm going to need these fresh colors for those butterflies. Okay. Back to painting. Back, back to painting. Okay, so I've got all fresh colors. I should be able to do miracles now. Just gonna bring that chin, her chin down just a little bit lower, and then need the line of her jaw to be in a little bit tighter to her mouth. And then just give her a little more gel to her cheek. That's starting to look right. It's not perfect, but it may not have to be perfect to, to read. So what's not reading is the turn of the edge of the shadow here on her cheek. It's not quite reading as shadow yet. So I have to go darker in a few places, I think, right here. And then I have those um, metallic um, colors that are splattered into her cheek. And I can kind of indicate that, that but that might be a hard thing to get to read, to sort of understand visually what that is.
if I can hit that highlight on her nose again. Eventually I'll get it to look right. John Brady says, I've been loving the um, paintings on Instagram. Well, thank you. Um, well, let's hit that nostril again. And then Gary Cohen says, um, do you add more safflower oil on each um, succeeding layer of paint? Um, I'm only adding safflower oil as I need the the consistency of the paint to be thinner, just a little more fluid. Um, not really thinking about sort of that whole um, fat over lean um, rule. Generally, I'm pretty much in the ballpark with that, so I don't really run into cracking problems. It's when you have very thick paint, like an impasto, and then you put um, very thin washes over that, then you're going to start to get cracking. Um, otherwise, I just really don't worry about it. And still, I have a little bit, given her a little bit too much cheek. So let's clean that up a little. That last little bit at the end was not where I wanted to go, but the rest, I think, was good. Just trying to paint the smaller areas of color now to get a little more refinement. Deepening that shadow a little bit. to turn on the underside of her chin. So that requires going darker there. And we got this nice bright red reflected light there. White with crinacridone red. Get that to read. Let's pull the butterfly away from the lower part of her jaw for now. 
just moving things around until they settle in the right place. Um, John Brady says, um, I've been thinking about buying some linen in a roll and tacking it to my cork board I have. Buying panels is getting expensive for me. Um, so my recommendation if you really want to paint on panel is to um, is to use Speedball Mona Lisa panels that they have for on sale at Dick Blick. Um, an 8x10 panel is about $1.50. I can't imagine you get doing much um, cheaper than that even with rolls of linen and um, my suggestion though is to put a layer of a pass of um, gesso down because the panels tend to be a little bit too slick and uh, and it, w it won't hold the paint otherwise Okay, let's just scumble some of that color in. And I know that butterfly is going to be around there, so I don't want the paint to be too thick right there. I'm going to try to pull a little bit of it off. And let's see if I can get sort of the sense of the edge of her hair here coming in. Gets a little bit deeper, um, darker orange as we the light is passing around the hair. Using up a lot of paint here. Butterfly is going to go right in there too. She has um, eyeshadow, kind of metallic eyeshadow on her above her eye here. It's catching a lot of light. Tear duct is almost like it has makeup on it. It's almost going white. Maybe it does have a little bit of makeup on it, but that would mean the makeup's right in her eye. I'm thinking more likely that because um, the photograph's getting blown out in that spot. white in the around here and a very soft edge to that highlight
oops, wrong color in that spot. Thought I had it dark enough on the brush. Just coming in a little bit lighter around that cast shadow so it's reading properly and I'm just going to punch it up a little bit. Oh, John Brady says that we don't have Blake's down here. I'm not sure where down here is. Um, but Australia, New Zealand, Argentina. Sounds like I could start a business by importing um, or exporting, I should say, um, painting panels. really sure you're seeing the the color that I'm seeing in this but um, I'm afraid to do color correct my um, webcam because last time I did it it changed the size and then display so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is I think yeah let's do a little color correction I can quickly resize it if I need to so just give me a second here so you can actually see the color in the background so advanced here is the pull the brightness down a little bit intensify the color balance. Don't know why it's not. Maybe it's a contrast. You can't seem to get, um, get that yellow to show up. Oh, there it is.
Okay, that's a little bit too hard, the color. Let's pull it back a little bit. That's... That's not too bad. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there because that's about the best I can hope for for right now. And close that, and let's see if it changes. No, the size stayed the same. Good. Okay. Back to painting. Okay. Uh, John Brady says, Louisiana. Um, got Michaels and Hobby. Um, no, you can order on Dick Blick online. You, you don't have to have a store. Um, I, if you... Um, send me, uh, DM me on Instagram, I will send you the link right to the panels. Um, again, it's Dick Blick and the panels are called Speedball, um, Gesso panels. And, um, they should be uh, much more inexpensive than Michael's. I can see that these butterflies are going to take me a long time. So um, I am just going to indicate pretty much where they are, and then I'm going to do most of the painting on them um, after the end of the live demo. So I th I, it might get a little boring, me just poking around on these butterflies for an hour or two. So you just have to imagine that I painted them. Stronger orange up here. I will try to get these flowers done, however. Okay, um, yep, just keep on going. I thought there might be more questions. Okay, I'm getting some of those springy curls going. Need to lighten that up a little bit up there.
Okay, so it's got that other butterfly here. Let's see. That one's pretty out of focus. And it has a shadow underneath it. A lot of red in it. that butterfly over too far. Let's fix that. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Creative license to move things around, but I do want it to be a little closer to where it is in the reference. This makes life easier if you're trying to get a fair amount of accuracy. If everything is dependent on everything else, then if you have something in the wrong place, then that can lead you to put other things down correctly. It's not so bad a butterfly, but anatomical features may be a little bit more difficult to to work with if it's not in the right place. Let's get a little bit of that red that's coming in here. The metallics that sit on top of the skin. Hopefully I can get those to read properly. It's always a risk when you have something that is somewhat unusual in a photo that has a lot of detail in it or subtle value shifts and changes, then unless you paint them fairly accurately, it's really then hard to understand what it is from a painting to a photograph. Our our brain does much better understanding what ambiguities are in photographs. In paintings, you really have to be spot on for it to work generally. And since I'm painting a, a rather loose painting method, then I start to run into risks with things like that that um, aren't really clear what they are. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Rishi, for giving him the link. Okay, let me see. There you go. Added that. Okay. Okay, need a clean paper towel. So, about an hour and a half in. We've made some pretty good progress so far. Um, oh, oh, I don't know why I keep on putting that blue down in there or the wrong blue, because it really does kind of jump out but, um, when it shouldn't. It needs to be more like purple with black. Okay, so big thing is to get those colors and then values in the neck working and get this bigger flower um, to at least lay it in for the most part. Like I said, some of this I'm going to do offline. No offense, but I just think that some of this that re this requires so much patience may be a little bit boring for the audience.
painting really quickly here and I probably would do much better if I slowed down a bit so that I don't mix the black of the hair with the bright colors of the flower but and when I do get black in the areas of flower then I have to come in with really thick paint to cover over it but I am my ADD is hitting on all cylinders at the moment so little um, alizarin permanent to get those darker reds. So she has these little gold-ish, I guess they're like hair rings, hair bands. I don't know what they are exactly, but I will try to put them in. It's like little bits of jewelry. I got a little bit of purple on this upper lip here. Light purple. And a little bit of dark magenta and purple on the groove on her upper lip. Okay, I'm going to try one more time that highlight on the tip of her nose. Work my way up to it. Okay, so that paint's a little ropey from drying out too much, so I've just added a little bit of the safflower oil to it, so hopefully it will sit down well enough. Still not looking like a highlight. Okay, it's maybe because the values around it aren't quite right yet. That's just throwing me off a little bit.
Let's try to get those small, delicate shapes on the underside of her nose to read correctly. That's taking a little bit of patience to get there. Okay. up my bigger brush again. I have too much blue again in the paint over here, so let's see if I can clean that up a little. Still, the forms aren't quite reading on the neck yet. Really have to do a fair amount of cleanup before that all starts to read. really turns out much higher here. Yeah, that's that's better. And I need to make her face just a little bit longer. Okay, starting to get there. We're an hour and 45 minutes in.
I got that smaller brush in my hand again. So I have to remind myself to let it go in a minute. Got a little bit too much white on the the brush there. So need to get a little bit brighter pink in the lip there, in the lower lip. Let's see if we can get that without getting too warm. Still working on the profile there. This is a nice place to put a little more blue right there in the top. It's catching the the reflection of the sky. Assuming that she's outdoors.
Okay, we're getting pretty close to where I want it to be before stopping, so um, got the likeness working, I think, and the placement of the butterflies, even though I don't really have them detailed in yet. I um, want to get this flower a little closer to where it needs to be. Got to let go of that little brush. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Just going to do a little refining and um, in the next 10-15 minutes and then I'm going to go offline. Okay, I'm running out of white here, so either I finish off what's there and put more down, or I take a break. So let's see how I do. Let's get a little pink down for this part of the wing, cover over that bit of white that I have left. That eyebrow just needs to be a bit higher.
I think this is um, good enough for tonight. Um, thank you all for for watching and joining in. I will work on this a little bit more this evening, hopefully to finish it. Um, either way, I will post either work in progress or the finished painting um, on my Instagram site tomorrow. So thank you all for um, joining in and watching. I um, don't know if, uh, if Karis, if you um, have a chance to watch this, I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for the beautiful photo and for being uh, such a courageous and inspiring voice um, um, with the work you do. Anyway, um, have a good night, you all, and I'll see you all here next week. Hopefully you can join in. Have a great night.